Okay, then uh, I'm back again with the Magneto project, and uh, I think this is part nine. I said in my last part, uh, when I did my vacuum impregnation on my armature, I, I think I said I'd do a, qu a quick video of the materials that I used, in case anybody were interested and wanted an idea on, on quantities and, and costings. So that's what I'm going to quickly do. But b before I do that, I just want to step back for a couple of a few seconds. And uh, when I show you my armature done on my last video, uh, after I'd done it, I thought about it, and I, I, I thought I probably ought to show you the, the readings I'm getting on that. Now, I'll quickly run through that. Uh, and my multimeter is only a cheap one and not very accurate. And on top of that, I'm not quite sure what the readings should actually be. I, I get differing uh, quotes in different technical information that I've found. And I think the reason for that, especially with the secondary winding, is because of the 11,000 turns that's on, which can vary, and because of the size of the wire that you use, which can vary slightly, I think it probably gives different re resistance readings. So I'll just show you my resistance readings quickly. Uh, on my primary wire, I think you can see my gauge from there. On my primary wire, it's showing on my gauge 1.3. Now I have had different readings, I've had from 0.9 up to 1.3, now whether that's, if temperature is anything to do with that, I don't know, because it's a bit cold today. Uh, then on my secondary winding, the, the reading I'm getting on my secondary winding is... Uh, three point eight three kilo ohms. Now I have had... 3.9 and I think I've had 4.1 I don't know why the why I get different readings maybe my meter's not up to scratch or it's something to do with temperature I don't know but anyway there's my readings now I've just done that really because really you want to make sure that when you've soldered your joints on on your secondary wind into your primary you want to make sure everything's connected properly I know it's a bit too late now if it's in but uh, uh, well, there you go. Better to do, better to find out now than before you've put all your magneto back together, I suppose. Uh, so that's me. That's me armature readings. Now I'll quickly go on to materials, uh, if you're interested. And before I talk about them and explain them, I'll just quickly run this th uh, through the screen. I've wrote everything down and costed it up and put the quantities on and, and where I got it from so I'll just scroll this through the screen then you can pause it as you wish I think my light's making a bit of a shadow in places I'm sorry for that but I think you can see everything now So I'll just scroll that to the top again, uh, and there you go, you can pause that whenever you wish now. Now I'll just quickly run through everything, uh, and I'll try and do it chronologically if, if, if that's the right word. Imagine we've got a bare armature here all cleaned up. First of all, <coughs> I gave it a coat of this uh, anti-tracking varnish. Well, I probably gave it a couple of coats of that. So I put a couple of coats of that on, and then when that had dried, I put some of this captain tape on. Now, this is a 33-metre roll, and that's the supplier I got it from. Uh, I've probably only used a couple of metres of this, so there's plenty on here to do, well, more armatures than probably you want to do. So I've done my varnishing on my, on my bake armature I put a layer of this on down the sides of the armature and round the core to make sure all the metal were insulated so it's had a layer of that 
then I put a layer of this woven fiberglass tape on round the core that is I put a layer of that on and then I probably gave it another coat on top of this with this varnish and then just to belt and brace it I put another layer of this round the core it's been in this so didn't take no room up so that's that's the insulation around my core then we come to the sides of the armature now on the original one these are the bits that come off so these are over 50 year old uh, two of these and one of these now this captain tape replaces this one which I've already told you I've put on and then these two you make from this paper laminate paper called Nomex uh, now this is a sheet 900, 900 millimeter long by 200 millimeter wide and there's enough paper there to do I say paper, it's like it's a, a laminate. There's enough there to do loads of armatures. And I've just cut you a couple just to show you how I fitted them. Uh, you use your old ones as a template and cut round them. And then on each side of the armature, you put two of these on. One facing, we, we, we cut that way, if you can see what I'm doing. And then the other one, with the slot the other way so you've got a total seal that's how they come off so, so they go on both sides then we move on to this insulation sleeving and what I did I bought three different sizes of, the, size of, the, of this I didn't actually buy these two I had them, I had them uh, donated to me but what they are the, the two millimeter bore one and a half millimeter bore and one millimetre bore and they come in metre lengths now there's enough in them metre lengths to do at least four armatures and what you do uh, you just cut a piece off suitable length thread it through that hole in your armature once it's on the armature if I can get it through and I think I've shown you that on my past video, one of my past videos. And then that sits inside the armature for your wire to come through. So that's the insulation, three different sizes. The sleeving. That's the Nomax paper. And then we come on to the primary winding then. Now this spool here, if you can see it, is a 125 gram spool of 0.8 millimeter diameter wire. And that's the, that's the chap I got it off, broke up. Uh, this spool has actually done two primary windings because I had a practice with my first one on my coil winding machine that I made. So this is, I've actually got two lots of armature out of this spool and there's that much left. So that'll do two armatures. So that's my primary. Then my secondary wire is 0.08mm diameter, which is 40 gauge or thereabouts, and there's 250 grams on this spool. Now when I weighed it, the spool it's 370 grams. I've weighed it in uh, uh, since I've done my armature, and there's 317 grams left, so I've used just over 50 grams of wire. Now. I had a little practice on my coil winder using this very fine wire and you can see how fine it is I don't know if you can see it and it snaps just like that it's as easy as that so I wasted a little bit so I've worked it out that this spool I've, I've used just over 50 grams so without my trial spool I think I'd get th four uh, five armatures, sorry, out of that, if I didn't waste any. So that'll do five. So uh, I think that's everything, no bar for this epoxy resin. But, uh, you just need a pack of epoxy resin. Rapid, that's what I used. So I think that's everything. Now, the only thing extra that you could want, you don't 
necessarily wanted but to belt and brace it on the top of this insulation this fiberglass braided insulation I put some of this an appropriate size of this shrinkable insulation on to belt and brace it if you like and then uh, I'm just reaching out for this other spray a friend of mine let me have this electrical insulation spray I think you've seen me using it in one of my past videos now I used this basically just really in, in, instead of using this and, and all only reason I did that is A I got it for free and B uh, it dries quick now if you're using this you've got to either put it in a sheet on on every layer of secondary so this just turned out to be a bit quicker for me and a bit simpler you don't actually need it but there you go if you want it that's where it is so I think that's everything really um, I can't see anything I've missed yeah and, and then I'll, and what I was saying is it, the total price everything I've bought will come to £48 and working it out on a pro rata basis if you like I think the old armatures cost me at the most £15 to do so that's what, it, that's what it'll cost you to do it now if you've got a lathe and you're interested in doing things like this it, it is an interesting project it can be a bit stressful at times but it's interesting um, I think all you just need is a bit of time and a bit of patience really and uh, 13 or 15 pound will do it yeah so I think that's everything now really I've finished that now so I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna I, I'm waiting I'm now waiting for a few parts to come for me actual magneto your bearings brushes various various things and also I'm, I've got to do a bit of work on the casting I'll just show it here. I think this magneto must have been stood in some water at, at one point. It's a spare one I've got. And it's just got a bit of pit in the face here. I don't know if you can see that. So this is where I'm up to now. I'm, I'm waiting for my, my parts to come. Oils, uh, my seals and my bearings and my brushes and everything else. And then I shall be reassembling it. And I've got this 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 work to do on casting and uh, I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, I ain't decided now when I've done all this I'll probably do another video because uh, what I'm thinking of doing is making a, another fixture for my lathe, now it might be my Myford lathe or it might be my Harrison lathe, I don't know yet and I might do a, a make a fixture for, for running this magneto in to test it like a test rig so that I can prove that it works and prove that it's going to keep working uh, when it's had a few hours of testing so that might be my next project so if you want to watch out for that I don't know. I'll sign off for now then and thanks for watching